Hello and welcome to 3-Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to take up this game with your time and bandwidth. Today's game is Despot's Game, an evil overlord computer has a bunch of humans lying around and is bored. So what you gonna do but send them off to kill each other in an auto battler? Despot's Game is available on PC, Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation, where you can purchase it for $20. It is also available via Xbox Game Pass. And in terms of game time, this is a roguelike, so you can spend a lot of time in it, but each run will take you around an hour. So what exactly is Despot's Game? Well, it's a roguelike mixed with an auto battler with an interesting PvP take and tons of crazy stuff to unlock. The game's main loop is deceptively simple at first. You are tossed into a Zelda-esque dungeon consisting of a variety of grid-based rooms, and you will move through them as your ever-growing army to try and fight your way to the end. Your army can be recruited at shops, and while initial humans come unarmed, you can also purchase weapons of various class types to deck them out. Like most auto-battlers, getting different types of weapons within the same class and adding them to your army will provide that class a bonus. For example, if you have a bunch of different tricksters, all tricksters' dodge will increase, or if you have a bunch of different fencers, they all gain crit critical hit chance, etc. You then organize your army as you see fit, i.e. put the tanks in front, healers in the middle, arrange them back, and move to a room to do auto battle. As the name entails, you have no control over this and just get to watch as your pink expendable humies either murder or are murdered and help your army comp was strategically relevant. Additionally, you'll have to keep your army fed as every move between rooms consumes food based on the army's size, and should you run out, your army takes fairly significant debuffs in combat. This means exploration must be very deliberate as unwanted moves can quickly dwindle food supplies and leave your army exposed to be murdered. There's also passive mutations to find, as well as a skill tree to invest money in for army-wide buffs. These passives are usually class-specific, meaning you'll want to synergize them with your army comp. Should you win a run, you get to engage in the PvP section of the game where your army pits itself against the leaderboard full of other players' auto armies, and you king of the hill battle to figure out your rank. It's actually a pretty cool idea around PvP, and gives you a kind of a final swan song hurrah for your army before starting your next run. And that's basically the spots game, a roguelike army battler with an emphasis on synergy, exploration, and watching my soldiers with Kylo Ren lightsabers get killed by the dialects from Doctor Who. So what did I like about Despot's game? Well, the auto battle battler system, along with this variety of classes, leads to a lot of great strategic synergies, and you will be coming back to experiment with different army comps, etc. Additionally, this game could be very addicting, as its simple decision-making paired with exciting auto-battler combat and an interesting PvP mesh it all together into a great one-more-run experience. And lastly, I found that the game has a fun sense of humor, and while I wish there was more of it, what is there shines enough to keep the whole thing light and entertaining. When it comes to the bad, the game does not have a lot of variety despite its roguelike nature, meaning you'll be seeing a lot of the same rooms, enemies, encounters, etc. as you replay, which makes it a little dull. Additionally, the balance is just all over over the place. RNG plays a massive factor in your success, the food system can gimp exploration, and certain classes are just vastly superior. And lastly, those damn mushrooms on Zone 3 are way overtuned and they need to be nerfed. Let's just say I'm not a fan of completely stomping the game and then losing my entire army to a single encounter. And lastly, this game just sucks on controller. With there being so many things to check, chain, switch, and all that, it just isn't a great fit. It's still definitely playable, but for me, after one run, I switched to the computer and never looked back. As you know, I rate games here in a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. I think Despot's game is a maybe consider, but it's definitely a hidden gem. It is a great idea trapped in a bit of a rough exterior. The concept of auto battler mixed with roguelike works really well, and the game does a great job of making the whole thing very accessible for newcomers. However, the minimal amount of content that you encounter paired with the wonky RNG and balance issues make the whole thing feel a bit underbaked. Regardless, the devs seem to be updating and polishing it to continue to improve the experience, and it's a better game now than it was when I played it at launch, so I am optimistic for its future, and should you enjoy auto battlers and roguelike, you might as well go check it out. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played the spots game, let me know what you think about in the comments, but regardless, go out there and give it a look.